Today we're going to be taking a look at the Makita XP-H10Z brushed hammer drill, so let's get started. Okay, starting off at the bottom of the drill, we have the 18 volt battery slot. Overall, the slot seems to work fairly well and there's very little play, and the battery seems to lock in securely. I have dropped the drill a couple of times and the battery has stayed seated, so overall I think the battery slot is good on this drill. Next up, we have the belt clip mounting points as well as the strap point on the rear. And Makita does include a belt clip with this drill, so overall that's a good feature. Okay, moving upward we have the hand grip. Overall the hand grip has a nice rubberized texture to it and is definitely comfortable in the hands. I think it's more suited for somebody who has smaller to medium sized hands. I think if you have larger sized hands it might be a little bit small. But for me personally it works great. I really do like the way that it feels and I really think Makita does an excellent job most of the time with their hand grips, except on a certain multi-tool. So overall the hand grip feels nice and secure and I definitely think it's going to be a good fit for a lot of people. Okay, moving on to the trigger. Overall it's a single finger variable speed trigger and I think it does a good job. It's built out of a nice quality plastic and there is very little wobble to either side. Overall the pull on is nice and smooth with next to no stickiness or gumminess. So overall I do think that's a good point on this drill. The one area I think could probably use a little bit of improvement on this trigger would be the definition in between the different speeds. Overall there is good definition between the different speeds. I just think that the high speed or the last speed engages too early and I think if it engaged later you'd have more definition. So that's just one area where I would say would be a good area to improve. But other than that I think the trigger is excellent on this drill driver. The response time is also very good and I don't think anyone's going to have any complaints about the response time. So definitely a pro. And directly behind the trigger we have the forward slash reverse slash locking switch. Overall the switch does a good job and it's definitely easy to put into whatever mode you want it to be in. I will say however that I personally would have liked to have seen it a little bit higher up on the body because where it is as it is now your fingers definitely brush into it fairly often. I haven't had it change its speeds accidentally yet but I can definitely see that happening. So overall I think that's one area that it could be improved on this switch. Okay, moving on to the LED light. Overall, the LED light does a good job of providing light for the area directly in front of the drill. The light will become active when the trigger is pulled, and the light will stay active for around 10 seconds after the trigger is released. So overall, it does a decent job. I personally would have preferred to be a little bit brighter. I find most of these onboard lights to be a little bit dim in my opinion, but overall, it does its job, and it's definitely better than having nothing, so it gets a pass. Okay, moving to the top of the drill, we have the speed selection switch. Now, overall, the switch is a good quality switch. I will say it's a little bit of a stiff switch, but I think over time it might break in. And even if it doesn't, it's still completely possible to change it barehanded or with gloves, either way. So overall, I think it's a good switch. And it's a standard layout, meaning that two is going to be the higher speeds or the faster RPMs, and one is going to be the lower RPMs, but the higher torque. So it's a fairly standard setup here. Okay, moving on to the function ring. Now, overall, this ring does its job, and it does its job fairly decently. But the problem with it is, is the fact that it's so smooth. It really is hard to change in between the hammer function, the drilling function, or the fastening function, simply because of how smooth it is. I really would have preferred to have seen some raised ridges and less of the smooth look or the smooth design they decide to go with because quite frankly if you're wearing any sort of thick gloves that don't have any kind of grippiness on them it's going to be impossible to change this and even barehanded it's still difficult to change so this is definitely a weak link on this driver. Okay moving on to the clutch. Now overall the clutch has the same design as the mode ring but it's easier to turn so it gets a little bit more of a pass here although personally I would have preferred to have some raised ridges so it'd be easier to grip. Now the clutch itself does a fairly good job in fastening mode at disengaging when you want it to. It does a good job of protecting the lighter weight fasteners you might be working with and so I definitely think it's a good clutch. I will say however that if you are dealing with larger or heavier duty fasteners you're probably going to want to switch it over to the drilling mode simply because the drilling mode will be able to fully sink some of the larger fasteners unlike the fastening mode which will leave some of the fastener exposed. So that's just something else to be aware of. But other than that it's definitely a good clutch and it gets a pass. 
Okay, let's move on to the chuck. Now, this is a fairly common design where the internals of the chuck are made out of metal and the outer casing has a plastic cover and it does a fairly good job. I haven't had any issues with it really, other than the fact that it's that same smooth plastic that's hard to grip, but it still does a fairly good job and it's a ratcheting style chuck, meaning that you'll be able to ratchet it down and it'll do a good job of holding your bits in place at the proper tightness and it won't become loose easily. So overall, I really do think the chuck on this drill is good. I just don't like the outer plastic casing. So it gets a pass. Okay, moving on to the cooling system on this drill. There's around 10 different vents that air can be pulled in from or be pushed out of. So overall, there's definitely plenty of vents and plenty of air moving through the body of this drill. And I definitely think that helps keep the motor cool. So overall, I do think the venting system on this drill is good. I will say if you are working in a dusting environment that this drill might have a little bit too much power because quite frankly, if you turn this drill on its side or upside down, you're going to end up with a dust cloud. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, moving on to the weight. Now, overall, the drill without a battery or a bit will weigh 1,182 grams, a little over two and a half pounds. And with a four amp hour battery and a bit, the drill will weigh 1,841 grams or a little over four pounds. So that's a fairly average weight for a drill. Okay, let's talk about the kind of performance that you can expect to get from this drill and why this isn't my go-to drill for a lot of situations. Overall, the performance from this drill is actually really good. I was able to drill 33 consecutive holes using a half inch bit into this 4x4 and it did it in under 4 minutes. So overall, I really think that the timing or the power that this drill has is exceptional. The one issue I have with this drill, however, would probably be the fact that, well, the motor housing is very well insulated to protect your hands from heat and also to keep you from figuring out just how hot that internal temperature is on this drill. This is a fairly basic drill, meaning there is no Bluetooth function, thank goodness, and that the internal temperatures, well, it's a guessing game. Now, with my Ryobis, I'm able to figure out what the internal temperatures is fairly easily by pressing my hand against the body and figuring out if I should stop using it or not. With this particular drill, that really does not work because quite frankly, the body is so well insulated that you can have smoke coming out of the motor housing and the body will still feel nice and cool. So overall, I'm really not a huge fan of just how well insulated the handle is or the grip is or the motor housing is from the motor system. So that's just something that you have to be aware of and something that you have to keep in the back of your mind when you're using this drill for long periods of time and also when you're using this drill in a hotter environment. Now, there's more to the story why I don't use this drill all the time, but we'll cover that in a little bit. Okay, let's talk about the performance using spade bits. Now, after I got done drilling the 33 consecutive holes using the half inch twist bit, I went ahead and threw a spade bit that was an inch and a half into the drill and started drilling. Now, I was able to make it through the 4x4 about five times before I started to get a weird smell. And on the sixth hole, when I was almost all the way through, the drill turned off and smoke began pouring out of the drill. So overall, the performance of the drill is good. I just would like a little bit more warning before the smoke starts pouring out, which is why I said before that I think it's a little bit too well insulated. And since there's no sort of internal mo temperature monitor or safety shutoff, at least in the tool itself, you really are the only person that can judge to figure out if you're using the drill too much and if it needs to sit and cool down for a while. So overall, it makes it kind of a difficult drill for everyday use just because of how hard it is to figure out what the internal temperature is doing. Okay, I still think that's a fairly good performance for the Makita. And to prove it, let's run a Ryobi drill through a similar test. Now, the Ryobi is not a hammer drill, so it's not apples to apples, but it'll give you a fair idea why I still think the Makita is a fairly good performer. And while the Ryobi is working on drilling holes, let's talk about why the Makita is not my daily driver. Now, you might assume the reason is because it's hard to figure out what the internal temperature of the drill is doing, but that's not necessarily the whole case. The real reason why it isn't my daily driver is because this is the, actually the second one of these that I have bought and now own. Now, the first one I bought, well, it got returned because it died on me doing very little and quite frankly, I've worked Ryobi drills way harder than that first one ever worked and the Ryobis have been just fine. So that's why the first one got returned. Now, the returning it was a huge mess because it was part of a set a box set or a holiday special set and it was about out of season so trying to track down a replacement set and packaging up the previous set which I had been using was a huge fiasco and just was not a good overall experience and it took forever to get the Home Depot employees to get down the right box and all that it just was a mess and so that's the main reason why 
I don't particularly trust this drill completely is because the first one burned up on me after doing so little. I do think this particular drill is actually fairly good and I think it's a lot better than the first one I bought. I'm just not a very trusting person after I've been burned once. So that's why it isn't my daily driver. Now back to the video. Now in the video obviously the Ryobi just finished up with its first hole and quite frankly it is now smoking before finishing the second hole. So obviously the Ryobi can't compete nearly as well as the Makita can at least when it comes to constant drilling over time if you let the ryobi rest it'd be able to finish up the probably the exact same number of holes it just needs a longer period to cool down before you can continue so that's why it isn't a professional level tool so overall the makita is definitely the better built tool of the two it's just not exactly what i would call the best choice at least not in today's world considering that the tool is seven years old at this point Okay, after the Makita had a chance to cool down, I went ahead and started driving in screws, and it did a fairly good job. Now, I didn't do any sort of extreme torture test where I drove in thousands of screws or anything, but it does seem to do a fairly decent job with the few I did put in, and I think it's more than adequate for most people's needs. So, I have to say it did a good job with the screws, even after it had smoke coming out of it. Now, I did test out the hammer function on a cinder block, and I was able to drill a couple of holes, but honestly, the performance really wasn't all that amazing. I'm not sure if it was the bit I was using, or if maybe I wasn't applying enough pressure. It just took forever, and I just don't think it was all that special or all that great of a performance. So, sorry I don't have the footage. It got corrupted by those evil little monsters known as video formatting errors. So, sorry about that, but like I said, the performance really wasn't anything special to begin with. Okay, let's run through the pros and cons real quick. And the first pro would be 18 volts. Overall, 18 volts is the most common voltage you'll find in handheld power tools, and it definitely is a good voltage. And it's easy to adapt batteries over from different platforms if you choose to, so definitely a pro. Build quality. Overall, the build quality of this tool is exceptional. I really do think Makita does an excellent job with the build quality of their tools, and so I would definitely say this is a pro. RPMs. Overall, the RPMs in this drill seem to be very high. Makita claims 1,900, and while I don't have a way of accurately testing that, I would say that's probably fairly accurate it's a fast drill and has plenty of torque so overall definitely a pro hammer function overall having the hammer function is definitely a useful feature and will come in handy although i don't think it's all that great of a hammer function at least it hasn't at least it's useful ratcheting chuck overall the ratcheting chuck is very useful and very handy and definitely a pro feature and one that i definitely think more drills should have so this is definitely a pro led light overall the led light on this drill does provide an adequate amount of light i personally would have liked to have seen it to be a little bit brighter but at least it hasn't and at least it does its job adequately so pro Belt clip. The Makita comes with a belt clip, and this is a very nice feature, and one that I wish more brands would include with a lot of their tools. So overall, definitely a pro. Brushed. Overall, the brush motor does a good job. It's just a brush motor, so that's just something to be aware of. And the second meh would be the chuck grip. Overall, the grip on the chuck works okay, and it's adequate. I just think there are better grips out there that would have been far superior to what they decided to go with. Air cooling. Overall, I really am glad that this has a good ventilation system on the inside of the drill. However, this can be a little bit of a problem if you're working in a dusty environment or close to the ground. So it's not really a pro. It's not really a con. It's just meh. And the first con would be the function ring. Overall, it does its job, but the design is not good, and personally, at this price point, it really should have had a better design. So this is a con. Burning smell. Now, the first drill I got was defective, and it had the burning smell before I had even put the battery in it. And the second one I got also had the burning smell, and it's been performing okay. So I don't know really if this is a major con or a defect, or if I'm just super unlucky in getting these particular drills. But either way, I really don't like the smell. I would definitely consider it to be a con. The first one died. The first one of these I got died, and it was a pain to return and then to get the, get it again. And typically, I don't get the same tool if it's died on me once, but it was part of a box set, and quite frankly, I wanted all the other tools in the box set because it would have been far more expensive for me to buy all the tools independently. So overall, the fact that it died on me once is definitely a con in my opinion. Getting old. Overall, this tool has been out for around seven years, and at this point, there is much newer technologies and better models available. So overall, the fact that it's getting old definitely makes it a harder tool to recommend. Recommend. I think if it's part of a box set, it's still a good tool to have, but other than that, I wouldn't buy this tool tool only. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on the Makita XPH10. Overall, it's a good drill. It does a good job, and I think if you're a homeowner or a DIYer, this drill will probably have more than enough power and it'll suit your needs just fine. I think if you're a working professional, you're probably going to be better off looking at something with a brushless motor that's a little bit newer. But if you end up purchasing one of the Makita holiday kits that are usually around $300 that has a bunch of different tools this will probably be the drill that comes with it and that's actually a fairly good price and it's a good way of getting into a power tool system that's
it's a little bit higher up than Ryo Ryobi. So overall, this is a good drill if you're a homeowner or a DIYer, but if you're a professional, probably look at something else. And run it through its paces a lot, just to make sure you didn't end up with a defective one. And that is it for the video. Sorry for the microphone issues this week. Everything should be back to normal next week. Now that the holidays are over, and we'll see you then. God bless.